بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Respected elders, your brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I would like you to imagine for a moment, if you have just come from work, imagine your workplace or a large business that has no supervisors and has no managers and has no president, no CEO, or a city with no mayor or a school with no principal or a head teacher, a team with no coach or captain. Imagine a world where everyone was absolutely equal in terms of their authority and there was no hierarchy and everything was done by consensus. Right? Would we be able to function? Would your workplace our community, our societies, would they be able to function? Perhaps if there are very small groups. Right? Maybe if there was a really, really small group and everyone just made decisions and everyone had equal say, maybe it would be able to function. But as the group gets larger, as more and more people become members of the group, the need for a leader would become quickly apparent. We learn from this that leadership, first and foremost, is a need. The Prophet ﷺ has said that إِذَا خَرَجَ ثَلَاثَةٌ فِي سَفَرْ فَلْيُؤَمِّرُوا أَحَدَهُمْ That when three persons go out on a journey, let them appoint one as the Amir, as the leader, as the head. In another hadith recorded in Musnad Ahmad, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma narrates that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that لا يحل لثلاثة نفر يكونون بأرض فلاة إلا أمروا عليهم أحدهم that it is not lawful for three people to be in the wilderness or a deserted land except that they select one of them as a leader, right? The implication here is that if you're in a place where there is no Amir, there is no governor, there is no leadership, then you must have someone who is selected as a leader. So thus, the importance of leadership is clear and we understand that primarily, first and foremost, leadership is a need. Now the main qualities of a leader that we learn when we look at the Islamic concept or teachings of regarding leadership is that first of all the person should be qualified for the job. They must have knowledge with whatever they are going to be dealing with. That, so essentially knowledge that is relevant to the job that they are going to be tasked with. Of course, piety and God consciousness also very important. If a person fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fears accountability in front of Allah, then their behavior is certainly going to be different than a person who does not fear accountability in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Honesty, trustworthiness, ability, experience. All of these qualities are essential for a good leader. One of the key roles of leadership in Islam is to lead but to lead with consultation. To consult seriously, right? not just a sham consultation. Right? Where the decision is already made but you know you just sort of go to show that there's a consultation, but to consult seriously with relevant stakeholders 
before making a decision. This is one of the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has highlighted for those who believe and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa jal says, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورَى بَيْنَهُمْ So these are those whose affairs are determined by consultation amongst themselves. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also instructed, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And consult them, O Prophet, in matters, meaning of public concern. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that I never saw anyone, I never saw anyone consult his companions more often than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So consultation is, is, is an essential part of leadership in Islam. Now, this could be leadership within the household, within the family. This can be leadership at work, in corporations. This can be leadership in communities. Whichever form of leadership one is involved in, consultation has to be an essential part of it. Now, the responsibility of those being asked, right? So the leader's responsibility is to consult and to ask. But those who are being consulted, they also have a responsibility. And their responsibility is to be fair and sincere in giving advice. To be fair and sincere in giving advice. You know, it is mentioned in the hadith that there are a number of rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim. And among them is that when he seeks counsel, give him advice. When he seeks counsel, give him advice. And the Prophet ﷺ is also reported to have said to the effect that the person whose counsel is sought is a trustee. Is a trustee. When he counsels or she counsels, then he must counsel with what he would propose to his own self. He should propose what he would propose to his own self. Meaning that when someone is asking you for advice, then the principle of giving good counsel is that you put yourself in that person's shoes and you give good, sincere advice. Right? You don't give advice that will further your own agenda, right? You don't give advice that, would, that furthers your own agenda or that is biased towards yourself. You don't give advice that is biased towards benefiting the one who is seeking advice, right? When giving advice, we must ensure that we are fair and we are sincere and we tell people because you see one of the problems that leaders face, right? Especially nowadays, is that as they become more powerful, they end up surrounding themselves with people who say yes. With people who say yes. Because if you say no, and if you go against a powerful leader, then it's very possible that you will no longer be asked for advice. You may no longer be, be a trusted advisor. Right? So they get surrounded by yes people. And this forms a bubble. Right? This forms a bubble, sometimes people refer to it as an echo chamber. That whatever the leader says, that's what he or she hears back. Because the people surrounding them are not sincere. And they're just giving them what they want to hear. Right? So this should never happen. This should never happen when you are asked for advice and when you are asking for advice. Be open to receiving advice which may be contrary to your own opinions, may be contrary to your, your way of thinking, your line of thought, right? and be open to accepting that. And when you're being asked to give advice, be open to giving advice, which may not necessarily be in line with the thinking of the leader. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us, وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُوا بِالْعَدْلِ right? One of the responsibilities of the believers is that whenever you judge between people, to judge with justice. To judge 
with justice. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us about justice in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that you must be fair. You must be fair. And even if it is against those who are close to you, even if it is against those who are your relatives, even if it's against yourself, right? to be just in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means to be truly just and to be truly fair. So it doesn't matter who is running, for example, in an election. Right? If it doesn't matter if it's my brother, my sister, right? my father, my child, right? it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a person that I know, that I don't know, right? who has the same background as me or doesn't. No, you have to judge justly because you are making a decision between people. So this applies in various scenarios, various scenarios, my brothers and sisters. So for example, if you're selecting people or roles, right? you're selecting a leader, you're voting for someone, or you're deciding a claim between two people. right? So you're acting as a judge either officially or in an unofficial capacity. Or you're choosing an a person's opinion over another person's opinion. So you are the leader and you are hearing people's opinions. You should not be biased towards one opinion simply because this is a person that you know or that is related to you or has done favors for you. Right? You base your decision on the merit of the advice as opposed to who it is coming from. In all cases, make fair and informed decisions, not just based on conjecture or biases. Now, it's possible that the opinion that is coming from such a person right, is actually the best opinion when you, when you weigh them equally. Then that's fine. You can follow that, no problem. But the basis of your decision should not just be on who you know or who is telling you, but rather it should be based on merit. Now, once there has been a consultation and the best decision or a decision that is made or a decision is made that is in the best interest of the stakeholders as a whole, right? So the consultations have been done, you know, everything has been weighed carefully and all the points have been considered and then a decision has been made. Then place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once a decision has been made through this process, don't revisit it or doubt it or be unconfident about it or be stuck in confusion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And consult them in the affairs. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ That when you have taken a decision, when you have taken a firm decision, a final decision, put your trust in Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verily loves those who place their trust in Him. So yes, before the decision is made, you do all your consultations, you have a rigorous debate, healthy debate, no problem. Debates are good, as long as the intention is good. Right? To have healthy, sincere debates where there's a clash of ideas and everything is debated and, and you know, all, different consideration, all different points are considered, that's a healthy thing, that's a good thing. Sometimes people get afraid. You know, one of the first meetings I attended after I came to Ottawa, right, for a local, uh, uh, yani not in Canada, but Ottawa-wide meeting of organizations, there was some great, passionate, healthy debate. Right? People were embarrassed, said, oh, you know, we're sorry, you know, this is your first meeting, you're just seeing us for the first time, and this is what you're witnessing, and, you know, it's not always like this, and, you know, don't worry, we do get along. And I'm like, why are you worried? I'm actually hap happy. I'm actually happy that people feel comfortable enough around the table to voice what is inside their hearts. They're not hiding it. They are passionately expressing their view and backing it up with whatever reasoning they have. And you're having a healthy debate. And then after that, sure, you're going to make a decision. Not everyone's opinions may have been, you know, maybe taken into account. But I'm happy about the fact that you're actually having this. Because the risk to that, the risk on the other hand, is that people keep things in their hearts, right? And they get frustrated and they don't get an, an opportunity to express themselves. And then that builds up and then it comes out. It bursts out in a much worse way. Right? With, with, great, with great negative implications and, and impacts. Right? So this is good that you're having a healthy debate. At the end of the day, everyone recognizes that whoever is expressing their opinion is sincere in their opinion. 
right? They're expressing it sincerely, they're sharing it, and they know that in the end, the consultation will be done and a decision will be made, and you know, they'll, 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 be, they'll go along with that. So that's a good thing and that's a healthy thing. So these are, my brothers and sisters, the basic principles of governance in Islam. In Islam. Now from an Islamic perspective, leadership is not something to vie for. Leadership is not something to vie for unless there is a great need and one is sincere and capable of fulfilling its obligations and duties. It's not something that we should push ourselves forward for. It's something that you consider a responsibility if there is a need and you are sincere and you are able, capable of fulfilling the obligations and duties that come with the role, then you can put yourself forward. Better yet, other people put you forward. Better yet, other people put you forward. Those who know you, they say, there is a need in our community. There is a need in our city, in our country, in our organization, whatever the case may be. And we need someone who has your skills and your abilities. We need someone who is honest and trustworthy as you have proven yourself to be. So therefore, we encourage you, we will support you, you should go forward. Right? For these reasons. Abu Dharb, Ghifari radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, O Messenger of Allah, will you not appoint me to a public office? Will you not appoint me? He's very frank, inshallah. Will you not appoint me to a public office? So he says, the Prophet ﷺ stroked my shoulder with his hand and he said that Abu Dhar, you are weak and authority is a trust. Authority is a trust. And on the day of judgment, it is a cause of humiliation and regret except for one who fulfills its obligations and properly discharges the duties. Hmm. So what do we learn from this? Number one, it is a trust. If you have authority, if you have power, if you have a role that you play, don't be too happy. Uh, don't be too excited because it is a trust, number one. Number two, it will be a cause, right? The default is what? That it will be a cause for humiliation and regret except, so this is the exception, except for who? For the one who fulfills its obligations properly and discharges the duties diligently. Right? What we should remember, my brothers and sisters, is you know nowadays we live in a world that is power hungry. Huh? Almost everyone is looking to expand their power. And this is what we seek. The greater the role, the more the obligations, the greater of risk, the greater the risk of humiliation and remorse on the day of judgment. The greater the role, the more the obligations, the greater the risk of humiliation and remorse on the Day of Judgment. You know, some of our greatest scholars, our past pious predecessors, they would be afraid to lead Salah. They would be afraid to lead Salah. Right? They wouldn't be pushing themselves forward to say that I want to lead. That I want to lead Salah. No, if they're put forward, right? if people say, we need someone, okay, you are the most qualified, you are the person who should lead us. Right? Then fine. But if you see someone who is pushing themselves forward, right? who is pushing themselves forward and promoting themselves, that should be a warning sign. Especially when it comes to the deen. Especially when it comes to religion. Right? Be very careful about this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me and all of us. Now while we may not be leaders in an official capacity, we must all remember that at one point or the other we will act as leaders in some way. And that comes with responsibility because the Prophet ﷺ has told us that Allah kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyati. That every one of you is a shepherd and is responsible for your flock. Right? So a role as a father, as a husband, as a mother, as a wife, as an employee, as a group lead, as a manager, whatever it may be. Every single role comes with accountability, comes with a burden of responsibility. It is a burden of responsibility and that's how it should be felt. So authority, leadership is a type of tr trust. It is a type of amana. 
And being entrusted with something means greater accountability. So this is not something, you know, exactly something that should be, that something to vie for unless there is a serious need or it is for the greater good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّوا الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا That verily Allah commands you to fulfill your trust to, to those whom it is due. So being in a position of authority or leadership, no matter how small, is a trust upon you. So deal with it as such, with seriousness and with diligence. And make every effort to be scrupulous and to give your best effort, to give your best in every way to fulfill the trust. Nowadays, sadly, we find that seeking leadership has become a type of game to simply seek power and influence. But of course, not everyone is like that. There are some great exceptions. There are people who put themselves forward and they strive and they work really hard. And they do it sincerely and you can tell by how they deal with people, by what they say, by the decisions that they make, by the time and effort and dedication they put into their work. So there are people like that even today, alhamdulillah. But generally we find that seeking leadership has become a game to simply seek power influence to the point to the point where sadly even masajid, mosques, Islamic organizations are not immune and are becoming targets of those who seek not to serve sincerely, not to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely, but who have an agenda of self-promotion and lust for fame and power. This is a reality, unfortunately, right? In larger cities, we notice right? politics within the masjid, politics between masajid. Oh, such and such masjid is run by this group and even subhanAllah within the same ethnicity. Like, is there an extent to jahiliya or what? And people from the same ethnicity, same ethnic background. Oh, such and such masjid is run by people of that village. They just constructed a $4 million masjid, so now we have to construct a $5 million masjid. It's true, I'm not making this up. Huh? Coming into the masjid, seeking position, wanting to be on the board to assert authority so that I can build a name for myself, so I can build up my portfolio because I have high ambitions. My brothers and sisters, don't do it. But if you are going to do it, okay, don't take this approach. But if you are going to, then for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keep the masajid out of it. Keep the masjid out of your sights. If you want to build your name and your fame, huh? and shaitan plays with you, right? it gives you good intentions. It tells you, no, I want to represent my community. If you want to represent your community, sure, mashallah, excellent. We need more diversity in all areas, no problem. But what do you have to offer? Huh? What do you have to offer? Do you have anything to offer? Do you have any skills? Do you have any education? Do you understand the landscape? Do you understand what the issues are? Are you able to speak about them? Are you able to offer solutions? Do you have a vision? Right? Build up all of those things. Then you go, mashallah, you serve your community, you represent community, you bring diversity, no problem. Alhamdulillah, excellent. You do it sincerely with the right intentions. Very good. But simply, just so that I can have a, a good name, uh, I'll run as a candidate, maybe my resume will look good. People will get to know me, I will build connections, I will be a person of power and influence. My brothers and sisters, this is a very dangerous and spiritually destructive path to be on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me and all of us. So we deal with trust carefully, right? be just, consult, have humility, consider opinions carefully, even if it's against your own opinion. And if we fall short, because we are all weak, I am weak, I make mistakes, I make mistakes all the time, we are all weak. If we fall short, we make mistakes, admit the mistake, apologize. And if it's serious enough, consider moving aside. If you're really a person of honesty and integrity, and if you made a serious mistake, 
that you should be ready to move aside. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and protect us all. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhum, I reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, a person who intends to do something, then goes on in consultation, and comes up with a decision to do or not to do that, he gets, or she gets from Almighty Allah, guidance towards an option which is correct and beneficial. So there is great barakah, great blessings in consultation and relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah azza wa jal protect us from everything which is harmful to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us leaders in every aspect of life who are sincere and who are uh, qualified and who wish to do well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all the leaders around the world, whether they're local or international or national. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from all types of pitfalls. May Allah azza wa jal make us those who are sincere in fulfilling our trust and our obligations. Ameen ya rabbal alameen.